building the Los Angeles Chargers. But there's a catch. We have to get rid of our wide receiver one and wide receiver two. Oh, oh, that's right. We already did that. Keenan Allen is a Chicago Bear. Mike Williams is a New York Jet. And Jim Harbaugh is the head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Let's hop into this rebuild. This team is a flat 81 overall. 81 on offense, 81 on defense. And I did update the squad with a lot of the rookies. Of course, there's the top five pick right tackle out of Notre Dame, Joe Alt. 79 overall with superstar. This was a really solid draft pick. I know the Chargers got a lot of flack for this, but I think this was the right call. It's very difficult to find high quality offensive line talent in the second round. It's not so hard to find wide receiver talent in the second round. We'll get to that. But right now he's got 91 strength, which is a great starting point. He's got averages on everything else. And eventually, as we can get this overall up, he will get access to abilities. Right now he only has one, which is, oh my God, he has access to nasty streak. It's actually so good. Well, he gets nasty streak to start out. And then as he goes up in overalls, he'll have these ability slots to use. So Joe Alt, a cornerstone of the offensive line, it's a great way to rebuild a program. So I really do like this. Also on the O-line, we have a lot of other young studs. Rashawn Slater is excellent at 90 overall. Zion Johnson's only 23 years old. Lindsley's obviously an older guy, but he's a great overall. And then Jamari Salier out of Georgia right guard. He's okay, but frankly, if you look at this entire offensive line, it's excellent. You rarely have an awesome offensive line to start out with, so this is a really good spot here. Tight end position is pitiful. I'm just gonna say it right now. I imagine we'll be using our tight ends a lot. Next up on the list, Lad McConkie, the second round pick. I know that there is a ton of talent in the NFL draft, with something about this guy just screaming Reams excellent wide receiver to me. I think all the guys that got drafted before him, they're good. You know, Marvin Harrison Jr., whatever. But I think Lad McConkie is going to be the first guy in and the last guy out. I think he's going to give his heart and soul to this team. And I, frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts dating Jim Harbaugh's daughter because if I'm Jim Harbaugh, I'd let this guy date my daughter. <laughs> um, Player comps for rookie Lad McConkie. I see him as kind of a, a Cooper Cup, a Hunter Renfro, a Braxton Berrios type receiver. I also could really Realistically, see him as, you know, half of Odell Beckham Jr. Sorry, I'm making the joke now, so I don't have to make it the whole video. Lad McConkey, though, 90 speed, 93 excel, solid route running. His deep route is not so great. We do want to work on that because, frankly, this is going to be our wide receiver one. That is the hope. Now, I'm not knocking on Josh Palmer, and I'm not knocking on Quentin Johnston, but frankly, these two haven't developed as good as they probably should have by this point. And Lad McConkey is the youngest wide receiver. So, so first in targets, we need to make sure it's Lad McConkey. And second can be Quentin Johnston. But I just don't know about him, man. He really had a rocky first year. And I don't know where he's going to get his confidence from. But hey, if we can get him some touchdowns, get him some easy catches, and get him back on his feet, hopefully he can be the wide receiver that, you know, he definitely wanted to be. But this was a tough year for Quentin Johnston. So I'm going to let Lad McConkey take the reins. Now, Harbaugh brought over basically the Ravens running backs, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. I'm not too huge on either of these guys, frankly. Um, I like J.K. Dobbins probably a little bit more. We haven't really seen the full extent of a fully healthy J.K. Dobbins season, so maybe we could try to see that here. He is younger than Gus Edwards, but I don't know. I'm not crazy about him. We will make him the starter, though. Defensively is where we run into problems, because <clears throat> looking at this offense, you can develop this offense. You have an amazing quarterback. You have Justin Herbert. That's all you need. Honestly, we've got a 25 year old who's superstar 87 overall. He's virtually guaranteed to hit 99 to be an X factor. That's easy. This is not so fun. Now, the best part of this defense, I would say is Derwin James, 27 year old superstar X factor, five year player. If he's not the best piece, it's Joey Bosa. Similar in age, both Bosa and Derwin are, they're not exactly young, but they're not old either. They're not getting worse. So we're going to have super high quality play out of Derwin and Bosa for the next four or five years. That's exciting. Khalil Mack, though? Khalil Mack is 32 years old. Khalil Mack might retire next year. This is basically the age of Madden where they start retiring. He's certainly not going to get much higher of an overall. The good news is his superstar abilities. Edge threat, strip specialist, no outsiders, really strong abilities. It also gives him good trade value. I don't know that this team can really make a huge impact right now, especially since we have so many guys that need to develop, like Joe Alt, McConkie, Quentin Johnson, Junior Colson. I think I might be trading Khalil Mack. He's at the top of my charts for trading right now. Gilman Free Safety, looking to get him star dev would be nice. And then we drafted Junior Colson, the rookie out of Michigan. Way to 
to pick up a middle linebacker because we lost Eric Kendricks in free agency. I like this dude. 88 speed, 86 tackle. That is a great place to start. Block shedding is trash, uh, but you can teach block shedding. You can't teach speed and acceleration. So he's looking like a solid backer for right now. This team just needs time, frankly. Four years from now, this could be an absolute superstar dominant team, but I do not see a way to make this team ready for the Super Bowl this year or next year. Pitiful defensive line. It actually is the lowest overall in the entire league. Puna Ford, Matlock, and Fox. I know technically Khalil Mack and Bosa are edges, but we're rocking a 3-4 defense, so three down linemen, four linebackers. I would like to get a high-quality D-tackle. Three fours are so much better when you have a DeForest Buckner or a Chris Jones. Anybody here in the middle that can actually wreak some havoc. And I'm sorry, Puna Ford. I love you. High quality name. You're just not that guy, pal. You're just not. Now, making sure the right reps go to the right people. We've got Lad McConkie at slot wide receiver and Johnston at wide receiver two. J.K. Dobbins is our third down back. I'm also going to make him our power half back. I just want Dobbins getting every carry that he can. If Gus Edwards wants to shake, if Gus Edwards wants to snake a touchdown here or there, I guess he can, but gotta have Dobbins in for the most part. Slot corner will be the rookie heart. Hopefully he can get some extra tackles, some extra reps there. Joey Bosa at rush left end, Khalil Mack at rush right end, and then we got Junior Colson, that rookie, as sub linebacker. So he can get reps too. One thing that's really important though, if you have a solid free safety, you can put them in as your backup sub linebacker. They'll get a lot of good reps. I just don't have anyone I want to use for that right now, but maybe we draft somebody. We'll have to see in this upcoming draft. Skill level is all pro, game style simulation, six minute quarters. Before we start the season, we've got 80 million cap. Before we start the season, there are some really good things too though. We've got 80 million cap space and I'm going to see what kind of value we can get out of Khalil Mack. He is technically our second best player overall wise. We're not winning a Super Bowl in three years and Khalil Mack's out of here in three years. There's no reason to let him sit. Let's find a team slightly interested. Broncos are slightly interested. Buccaneers finally landed on a solid trade. The Buccaneers years we're willing to give up this year's first and second round pick for Khalil Mack. So we'll have our first and our second as well as the Buccaneers first and second and Khalil Mack is a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Okay where are we? Team schemes? Now, without Khalil Mack, there is a huge burden on Justin Hollins right now, who's a 70 overall. Quite frankly, I don't expect this guy to even be one-tenth of what Khalil Mack was, but that's okay. We got excellent value out of Khalil Mack. Hopefully, we can turn this upcoming draft class into a ton of studs and capitalize in the future while we still have Justin Herbert. That's the big thing here is Justin Herbert. Because if I'm Justin Herbert and my franchise just traded away Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, I'm pretty pissed off. Ooh. Well, we're facing our former wide receiver here at midseason, but we are just getting smacked around one and five. Thing on the one and six bears. Although we have a breakout wide receiver, please tell me that's Lad McConkey. I just wanted to say, I really appreciate you involving me in the game plan last week. I am praying that's Lad McConkey and not Josh Palmer. Oh, let's go! Lad McConkey! Now, I will say on these breakouts in Sim, three plus touchdowns kind of crazy. The Sim's not going to do that for the most part, but still, that's good to know. Lad McConkey's having a good season. Derwin James is second in the league in interceptions. Number one is Jordan Poyer, though, with six. Other than that, we're not on any of these lists. No receiving or sack leaders. No passing leaders. Stafford's going off. All right. I'm going to be totally honest, gentlemen. I don't ever attempt to truly tank because that's kind of unfair, but this is going really well for us. We're going to have a really solid pick. The next best thing would be if Tampa Bay is also struggling because we'll take a really good pick from them, too. It certainly doesn't help that we're playing the 15 and 2 Chiefs and the 13 and 4 Raiders twice a season. Damn, we got smoked finishing at the bottom of the AFC West at 4 and 13. I'm gonna be honest, I don't see this being realistic for this year. Having maybe seven or eight wins. Nothing too much crazier than that, though. Regardless, a trash season, but I do want to take a look, see how we finish the season. Statistically, a solid season for Justin Herbert, but I gotta say, this touchdown interception ratio is not good. I'm sure Mahomes had something like 40 and 2. Mahomes was 41 and 7, so getting all the yards but none of the touchdowns. We were not able to capitalize. Look at all these numbers. 30 plus for everybody on this list. Other than, I think that was an anomaly season. I think that was very uncharacteristic. Dobbins almost had a thousand, but he had Whoa, whoa, wait, so all of our touchdowns were going to Dobbins? Holy shit. Hey, that's the best part of franchise, baby. Maybe J.K. Dobbins is going to be our breakout stud. How was Lad McConkey? 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Is that enough 
for rookie of the year? We're gonna find out. Hayden Hurst, this is like, by the way, this is why we need a tight end. In a lot of the offensive playbooks I like to run, Kansas City, Buffalo, they use their tight end. So Hayden Hurst getting 1,009 is actually, I do not like that. That bothers me. Quentin Johnson with an okay season, Palmer with an okay season, and Dobbins was pretty good through the air too. Defensively, holy shit. That had to have led the league. Junior Colson with 164? What? Holy shit, he led the entire league in tackles as a rookie. I wonder if that's gonna give him defensive rookie of the year. It'd be awesome. Seven TFLs and three. Holy shit, Junior Colson out of Michigan. I hate getting hyped for a Michigan player. I gotta do it, I guess. Bosa had 15 TFLs, 10 half sacks. Very good season for him. Hollins had five and a half, not bad. And then five interceptions for Derwin James. So great season for him too. Christian Fulton, Asante Samuel, doing well. It was a very good season, actually. I honestly think we just got unlucky. I think a lot of these games probably could have gone our way. I, I actually, I wanna go look at the schedule now. I need to know how we lost a lot of these games. And that doesn't seem right. So once we lost by one score here, lost by a field goal, lost by one score. Lost by one score, lost by one score, lost by two scores. Got shit on by the Lions, got shit on by the Ravens. Lost by one score, got shit on by the Bills, got shit on by the Chiefs. Damn, that's a very Charger season, isn't it? Losing by one score. Wow, this is pretty good simulation, tell you what. All right, the NFL draft is coming up. Let's take a look at these prospects. First two picks actually would go really, really well for our team. I'm not certain that we have round one pick one, though. I don't think we were the worst in the league. I think we have round one pick two. Dominique Reeves, physical specimen. This guy is a guaranteed monster. This is an absolute guaranteed monster. A, 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 oh my God. Okay, Dominique Reeves, guaranteed talent in a position that we need, a corner, and then a power rusher right outside linebacker. Kind of sounds like a young Khalil Mack. Also a freak show. A great elite, great, oh my God. All right, yeah, both of these guys would be massive. Let's see where our pick landed. Ooh. So here's the mock drafts. Good news. We are actually round one pick one. So we could take Dominique Reeves or we could take Patrick Meadows. It's fully up to us. I'm nervous though. And frankly, our team desperately needs both. We could replace Khalil Mack with a franchise player or we could lock down a franchise corner. Now we're gonna pick again at round one pick nine. Hilariously, this is the exact same situation the Chicago Bears were just in. Round one pick one and round one pick nine. Now in these mock drafts, it has Sean Wilson, an excellent corner, going at round one pick nine. And I was looking at Sean Wilson and this guy looks like a dog. Elite speed, great agility, great acceleration, great strength. Best case scenario, we could take Patrick Meadows, round one pick one, and we could pick up Sean Wilson, round one pick nine, but we just gotta hope that another team doesn't jump on Sean Wilson. Now, technically, we could trade down with Washington, establish some capital, and let them take Dominique Reeves. No, it's not worth it. It's not worth risking. There's no way. We don't trade down one spot and hope. I think we take Meadows, and we hope that Sean Wilson's still there. That's the best draft for us. Let's do it. Let's go, Chargers. Round one, pick one. We didn't even try to tank. We were just ass. I had a good playbook on, too. That's a bummer. Well, it's between these two studs, but Patrick Meadows, power rusher, linebacker out of Stanford, with elite strength, great speed, great acceleration. Okay, so the elite and the two greats, this guy's definitely a stud, but I am concerned about good, good, solid. He might be like a 77-ish overall. Definitely going to be hidden dev though. And it's a lot better than Justin Hollins. Please be hidden dev. Thank you. Oh shit, he's actually a dog. 84 speed, 88 excel, 84 strength. 6'2", Hidden Dev. It's an interesting build for a Power Rush linebacker, though. 6'2", 260. Okay, Hidden Dev. That's what we needed to see. Now, let's see if Sean Wilson's still available for us. Cecil Gallery is taken next. Wait a minute. Dominique Reeves is still available. Jimmy Spearman goes to the Colts. Please, Sean Wilson. Yes! All right, so there are two corners available. There's Benjamin Hendricks and there's Sean Wilson. Hendricks is 6'3", out of UCF. Elite Excel, great speed, Great strength. Sean Wilson. Il Ooh, this is actually really hard. Okay, Sean Wilson has more greats and he is elite in speed, not excel. I think Sean Wilson is better. This is a tough pick between these two. But this Hendricks is 6'3". He has C man coverage, C press. I gotta go Sean Wilson. Sean Wilson was my guy from the jump! 
monster. Hidden Dev Corner Sean Wilson, 96 speed, 92 excel. We absolutely made the right choice. That's a franchise corner right there. Sean Wilson. This is a huge draft. And that's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers pick right there. So Khalil Mack, right now, if you want to track it, Khalil Mack is now Sean Wilson. And we got to see what we get out of this round two pick nine. Okay, so round two, pick one. Let's see what's best available. I wouldn't hate a wide receiver. It's another solid corner. Not gonna lie, I wouldn't hate a wide receiver. Geo Morrison with elite excel, great strength, great change of direction, good speed and agility. He's a 5'11". It's a decent option, but I do need D-line too. I'm just not seeing a lot of good D-line options. Ooh, this is what I need. Chet Battaglia. It's a hell of a name. I've never seen that auto-drafted name. Chet Battaglia, elite speed and excel. I gotta take Chet Battaglia. Oh, but he's probably available at two pick nine, huh? I'm taking him. He looks like a stud. I'm taking Chet Battaglia. We get a six foot six, 87 speed, 90 XL hidden dev tight end. Three for three on our draft picks. I, I may have just reached on Chet Battaglia. I don't think I needed to take him there. Probably gonna trade it down, but I got the guy I wanted. That's, that's the most important part here. Okay. Now here's the second pick from Khalil Mack. A lot of corners, a lot of wide receivers. I need D-line. I'm taking Geo Morrison. I'm taking Geo Morrison. I really like this guy. Oh my God, look at this draft. I can't tell you the last time I went four for four. 91 speed, 94 excel. Geo Morrison, playmaker wide receiver out of the University of South Florida. And he's hidden it. We got you, Herbert. I got you two weapons, all right? Now, the very start. Now, this will be my last pick of the draft. I'll let the CPU take the rest. I have to get defensive line. Dude, there is nothing. Yo, Marcel Porter. Round three, four with elite speed, elite excel at D-tackle. Great jumping. Everybody wants their D-tackle to jump, right? He's a 6'2", 295 speed rusher D-tackle. If you're hitting dev, this is one of the best drafts I've ever done. <sighs> That's all right. It's a fast, big D tackle, and we're really shallow with that position. I don't know, though. I don't think he's going to be a big impact player. It's the third round. All right, CPU can take the rest. All that's left is the full draft overview to see uh, if the overalls match up with these hidden devs, because they are hidden devs, but if they're all 70 overalls, this is not a good draft. All right, boys, moment of truth. The draft recap from a big draft for us. Oh, oh, shit. What? <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Sean Wilson is better than Meadows. Okay, technically. Now, corners on average are higher overall, but 81 overall, Sean Wilson? Holy shit, what was Dominique Reeves then? Sean Wilson's a stud. Patrick Meadows is an 80 overall power rusher. That's amazing. And look at all these spectacular picks. Batali is a 75. Morrison's a 76 in the second round. And Porter, despite being normal dev, is a 74. Computer whiffed on all theirs. That's okay. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That is a monster draft. Holy shit. There's no way that any of these teams beat me. Dominique Reeves fell all the way to four, but he's an 84 overall. Holy shit. He went to the Dolphins. Okay, so the best player in the class was Dominique Reeves. Okay, I can be a little sad about that. Spearman, the safety, was an 81. Wilson was the third best player in the class, and the fourth was Paul Meadows. Patrick Meadows, sorry. Gallery went second. Wow, this is a hell of a class. It's a monster class, actually. Five players, 80 overall or better. All right, yeah, I am excited to get these guys in the lineup. I also just realized I made a huge mistake. We have Tuli Tupelotu. I don't know how I did not have him in the rotation. How did I not have him in? So now we have Meadows, Bosa, and Tuli Tupelotu. I think one of these guys might actually have to be a true edge. I might make Tuli Tupelotu a left end. He's a bit undersized at left end. I'm doing it. Tuli Tupelotu is my new starting left end. Yeah. Apologies, boys. All right. Hey, after an amazing draft, here's the Chargers. Dobbins and Herbert in the backfield. We've got McConkie, Josh Palmer, and now Gio Morrison. Got Chet Battaglia up. Got Chet Battaglia at tight end. And Hayden Hurst is now start dev. Not bad. Offensive line looks amazing. And then defensively, we've got Meadows. We've got Colson. Bosa's X Factor now, which is awesome. We've got the stud Sean Wilson. We've got Porter on the D line with Morrow and Tua Pelotu. I'm really sad I forgot about Tuli Tua Pelotu though, because I could have traded Khalil Mack and put Tua Pelotu to replace Khalil Mack, but it's okay. We're off. We're off to probably, I think it's going to be a really good season. We were the worst team in the league last year, which means we have the easiest schedule. I will not be shocked at all if at midseason we're five and two. That's my guess. Five and two. Ooh, guys, I was wrong. I was wrong in the right direction. What a reversal. What a reversal. 4-13 and and now 6-1. and one. We already have more wins than last season. All right, we're about halfway through the season. Justin Herbert is second in the league in passing yards at 16-2. and two. He's already playing so much. I honestly think last season was just a fluke. 
We just had a weird season. Okay, Dobbins has an accurate amount of rushing touchdowns now. Isaiah Spiller is sharking his shit though. Four for Isaiah Spiller. McConkey, 556 and five. Geo, 488 and six. Palmer's balling out. Vitaly's got three touchdowns. Yeah, this is gonna be a great season. Oh, I forgot to check awards last season. I'm so sorry, you guys. I haven't done a rebuild in a minute. So in that first season, the Cowboys beat the Ravens by one. Offensive rookie of the year was Ray Shee Rice, but the defensive rookie of the year was Junior Colson. So that's awesome. CeeDee Lamb get offensive player of the year. Max Crosby, defensive player of the year. So unfortunately, Lad McConkey does not get offensive rookie of the year, but that's okay. Apologies, gentlemen. Hey, we're going to the playoffs. This is a quick, hey, I said we couldn't win a Super Bowl in two years. I might've been full of shit. Let's, let's go. I am, I am talking smack. Like we don't have the easiest schedule in the NFL right now, but stay with me. Me. Not so hot the second half of the season, but still good. We're 12 and 5. Our wild card game is against the Buffalo Bills. Sean Wilson is already an 85 overall, and he's got a big upgrade here. Oh shit! Sean Wilson is a superstar X Factor. Universal coverage, flat zone KO, strip specialist, and inside shade. I'm gonna give him mid zone KO and deep route knockout. Oh my god, you're a monster. Sean Wilson. We're gonna I'm gonna give him a slot upgrade. Slot upgrades, I think, have a decent chance to give you a speed up boost. We do get press and excel. That's really good. Sean Wilson's at 97 speed, 88 man. Oof. Oh my god, that might have been the best pick. One of the best picks I've ever made. Round one pick nine. What a monster. Hold up. I got to look at my lineup now. I want to see if anybody else is anything crazy. Okay, so Gio Morrison was star. Battaglia was star. Team's got morale though. We're winning games. People are excited. Meadows. Oh my God. Meadows is an X factor. I, I see this kind of because he was round one pick two, but holy shit. Got to give him unstoppable force. He's got unfakeable and reach elite, I guess. These aren't great abilities yet, but he's only an 85 overall. He doesn't have the ratings for it yet. Oh my God. Patrick Meadows. Come on, baby. Well, we got four X factors on defense and then all of our offensive picks for stars. Not bad at all. Let's play a couple fun minutes. Let's play one drive of this wild card. Let the sim take over. See how this goes. Year two, we're playoff bound. That's awesome. Not gonna lie though, the Bills aren't really a team I wanna play right at the start here. Uh, Bills are solid. They're a tough team to beat. So we got Meadows with the X Factor over here. We've got Joey Bosa with the X Factor over here. I'm gonna pass rush Joey Bosa and Patrick Meadows and Joey Bosa combined to make it fourth and 13. Bills are forced to take the field goal. Let's go. On offense now and in the red zone. Wow, we can do a lot for the squad here. So who do we got? We got Dobbins. We got Battaglia. We got Gio Morrison, Josh Palmer, and Lad McConkey. The only thing we got to get Herbert is some abilities, man. Ooh, and I got lost in the sauce. Second and 17. If we can get one of these wide receivers or the tight end Battaglia to have some abilities, they're going to be a hell of a lot better. But I kind of like how Battaglia looks right there. Chet Battaglia, the rookie, with a with the first touchdown of the playoffs. Nice work. That's already a lot of impact for me, though. Let's jump forward to the end of this game. It's 10 to 7 bills. Uh-oh. Yeah, my impact seems impactful. Wait a minute. 17, 17, 20 to 20, 23 to 20. Wait a minute. 23 to 20. Justin Herbert unloads. No way, Lad McConkey just dropped that. Lad McConkey, you're a fucking white wide receiver. The only thing you're supposed to do is catch this shit, all right? We don't even care. You don't have to one hand catch it. Just catch it. I'm, I'm shocked. All right, third and 10. Loading up again. Herbert's flushed out. We're gonna sell for a field goal. That's not good. That's not good. 23 to 23, Buffalo is punting. I repeat, Buffalo is punting. All we need is field goal range. And we win this game. 36 seconds left. We're across the 50, so this is field goal range. Is this a handoff to Dobbins? It is, but don't lose yards. Dobbins, hold on to the ball. Yes. It's gonna say, man, you gotta wrap that thing up. Don't let him punch it out. Timeout from the Bills. One more first down, and we're gonna win this game on a field goal. Dobbins, that is not a first down. Third and inches. Bills are not using their timeout, but what are we doing? There's nine, eight, seven. Please, for the love of God, get down and call a timeout. Okay, I've seen crazier stuff on Madden Sim, okay? So pardon me for freaking out, but a game-winning field goal is gonna end this, and the 
Chargers are going to the divisional. Hey, Harbaugh season two is going very well right now. Wow, what a full 360 from last season. Herbert with 300 yards and a touchdown. Dobbins with 55 and a touchdown. Battaglia, eight for 118 and a touchdown. Meadows hits 85 overall as well, so he gets a new ability slot. No outsiders are really good ability. So is double or nothing. I'm gonna give him no outsiders. He should get some solid TFLs with that. Divisional is against, oh, just the worst team to play, bro. We're 0-2 against them in the regular season. Taking out the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't even think it's gonna be fair if I play both offense and defense. I'm gonna let this sim out. If it's close, we'll watch at the end, but I'm not gonna lie. This is never fun. It is so shitty to play this team. Opening drive, we get seven though. Seven to three, seven to 10. Wait a minute. There's no way we get out of this, right? 24 13 24 to 20 please 31 to 20 38 to 20 38 20 jesus he's hung a 45 bomb on us it's okay chiefs dynasty is a dynasty it's only our second year we made it to the divisional round we had a great clutch first game we ran into a behemoth it's gonna happen andy reed gets the best of hardball 45 hung on us yeesh mahomes 241 and four herbert was 282 and four he just had interception Pacheco is a dog. Dobbins, not so much. Battaglia. Oh my God. Chet Battaglia is on a generational run right now, though. 11, 139, and three touchdowns. Yeesh. I'm glad we drafted a tight end. I'll just say that. And the final Super Bowl. The Ravens beat the Niners. Lamar's MVP. Mahomes' is league MVP. Israel Parsons, defensive rookie of the year. And Lance Lehman, offensive rookie of the year. So we didn't get any more awards. But we can look at our stats for the season. Justin Herbert must have came close in MVP voting. Because he's 40 and 4 with 4,600 yards. It's just fucking Patrick Mahomes, man. Patrick Mahomes is just in our way. It was 46 and 5. That's just dickhead shit, man. Any other season, Herbert gets the MVP for this. That's a bummer. Okay. Dobbins, 1,012. Not bad at all. McConkey, 1,314. Huge season. Battaglia, 1,012. Morrison, 853 and 7. That's a really good, really good sophomore season there. Or rookie season. No. Yeah. Rookie season. We're going to kick off the draft. I do. By the way, I am doing free agency. In both free agencies, there was nothing solid available, so I didn't want to waste your time. We're round one pick 27. I'm not certain this is going to be worth it for us. I wouldn't be shocked if I trade down and establish some capital here. Let's see if anything jumps out at us. I actually am going to take Cal Rathman left guard out of Stanford. My last Stanford pick was Meadows. He was a dog. A 93 strength hidden dev and 83 excel. Okay. Okay, Rathman, I see you, buddy. Getting down the field. This is a solid prospect, and we currently have a bronze Jamari Sailor at right guard. So Rathman's going to move to right guard. Um, That's a really nice pickup for us. I'm going hands off for the rest of this draft. I don't need much. I could technically trade away all of these, but that's pretty unrealistic as far as a rebuild goes. So I just want to see what the CPU will pick up for me. All right, draft recap. I think we did a huge amount of our damage in 24, but that's what I love to see. And hey, the CPU got a dog. Wait a minute. Whoa. CPU yoinked the 73 right guard in the third round. Oh, but he's normal then. That's a good pick, though. I'm impressed. Rathman is a definitely an excellent pick. They end up getting Jerry Mitchell, the bummiest halfback prospect you've ever seen in the second round. Dude's a 64 overall. We did redeem ourselves, though, with a 71 overall, 93 speed halfback. So hoping he might be hidden dev. So nothing crazy here. Let's see what the whole league was rocking with. Significantly weaker class than last time. There's William Madden, 80 overall with 91 speed. And Mark Forbes, wide receiver. It honestly feels so good. When you use a bunch of draft capital in a really strong class and and the next class when you don't got shit is just ass it is such a good feeling i mean kevin ramsey would have been nice but that's round one pick five so we are chilling we are doing just great that was an awesome season for us uh frankly we dominated added to our offensive line and the whole team got better so this is going to be a really solid season coming up here uh left guard right now zion johnson great right guard can now be cal rathman and he'll develop a little bit faster thanks to hidden dev we got an 87 offense and an 81 defense. Let's take a look at the roster headed into year three. Okay. Herbert's now X-Factor. Amazing. McConkey is superstar. Geo Morrison regresses to normal dev. That is a bummer. Especially considering Quentin Johnston didn't regress. That's weird. But it's okay. These wide receivers are great right now. Especially because of the addition of Chet Battaglia. Herbert throws the Chet Battaglia a lot. So really you could think of it. As wide receiver one and two are McConkey and Battaglia, we're kind of rocking a Chiefs offense here. Rathman, our new right guard. Offensive line's looking great. Alt is developing super well. Johnson, Lindsley, Rashawn Slater. That offensive line is nuts. 
D-line is still pretty mediocre, but Tuli Tupelotu had a very good season. Sante Samuel goes to superstar. Wilson, stay in X-Factor. Bosa regresses. Meadows is still X-Factor. Ooh. Oh my God, I lost Junior Colson in free agency. Shit. I was, I was looking through free agency. I didn't see anybody good. I completely forgot to check if we lost anybody. Sorry guys, I'm rusty. I really haven't rebuilt in a while. That's an issue. I, I like him a lot. I will say though, Deion Henley is actually a really nice linebacker. 25 years old out of Washington State. Very similar intangibles to Junior Colson. Also, I played Deion Henley in Madden this year and he beat me. <laughs> He's really good. So I got to show some love to Deion Henley. He'll be our MLB one for this season. I'm cool with that. It'll be something we look at the draft or a potential trade for. I wouldn't mind trading for a middle linebacker if we need it at the end of the season. But for now, I think we have all of the pieces to make a serious playoff push, potential Super Bowl. So let's go to midseason and see how we're looking. Uh-oh, we need to do damage control. What happened? Why are we two and five? Harbaugh, talk to me, buddy. We're only better than we were last season. We don't have poverty schedule anymore. That's part of it. We beat the Bengals, lost to the Cowboys to the Raiders, to the Chiefs. Shit. It's just, oh, we lost the Broncos. There's no excuse. What are we doing? Don't tell me we whiff year three with all this talent. What's our NBA comp? We have all this talent, but we just fall short. I don't, I don't have good NBA knowledge right now. I did absolutely, I am on a heater on underdog fantasy right now. Yeah, I don't know if you guys knew, but I switched from prize picks to underdog fantasy. Um, code MMG, you get $250 in uh, free play cash. This video is not sponsored, but just thought I'd let you know. Mwah. Eight and nine. Oh my God, we actually did it. We actually whiffed. Yeah, AFC West is tough. I'll say that, but dude, how? I'm so shocked. What happened? This has been one of the weirdest leagues I've ever been in. Like, just weird simulation stuff. Oh my God, you're lying. <laughs> what the fuck? Drake May had a 5,000 yard season? What are you smoking, buddy? 42 and 12 on 5,000 yards. Also, Drake May got traded to the Rams at some point. Mahomes almost did a 5,000 too. What? Holy shit. Josh Jacobs had 2,200 yards? What the? What is going on? What is this season? Dobbins had 1,016. Okay, whenever J.K. Dobbins has a shit ton of touchdowns, it was a very bad season for us. McConkey, another great season. Battaglia, another great season. So that's that's two good things right there. Henley had some solid tackles. We're losing pass rush a little bit here. Okay, Meadows is moving up. Bose is regressing. So this, it's really good that we got Meadows and Tupelo 2's putting in some work there too. What's crazy is we could be at a point where we could trade Joey Bosa, move to a Peloto to a starting spot, and just go to a Peloto and Meadows. No. I think we need I think we need Bosa for the we need a D tackle. That's what we need. We need a, a superstar D tackle. I think that's what moves the needle on this team. Wow, and we just lost here. Okay, we gotta make a move. We gotta make a move. Let's make a move. Um, let's see if there's any, like, defensive studs available in free agency. If not, I think we need to trade for a elite D-tackle. Season recap, no! The Buccaneers. Oh my god, you did that without those two picks? Yo, did I give the Buccaneers a Super Bowl with Clomac? I hope not. Buccaneers win. They beat the Chiefs. Deja vu, man. All right, free agency. Talk to me, baby. Okay, Mark Andrews is available. That's sick. Oh, he he doesn't want to play for us at all. But Christian Wilkins is, uh. We have 38 million cap, but he's 30. You know who's a better pickup? Patrick Queen. We can get a rock star middle linebacker for probably four years without breaking the bank. So he does already want to play for us. I probably don't need to go player friendly. I'm going to give him a neutral offer. Five years, slightly higher salary and bonus. I, I would love to sign Patrick Queen. I'm not so geeked up about Wilkins. We can bring Keenan Allen back home. <laughs> Yo, actually, I'm going to offer on Keenan Allen. I'm going to bring Keenan Allen back home for the Super Bowl. I'm Because frankly, like, buddy, you left us. Okay? You went to Chicago, okay? So if you want to come back, you can. Let's eval the offers. Oh, shit. Where did you go, you fuck? Patrick Queen went to Atlanta. They have better strip clubs. Wow. Keenan Allen's still thinking. Nobody wants this, man. Okay, I'm going to give him a slightly better than shit deal. Maybe he'll come home. Damn, I'm so sad about this. I thought for sure we were going to get Queen on that deal. I will pick up Jermaine Pratt on a one year though. I think we'll be able to pick him up. He's certainly not Patrick Queen, but he should be good for two years. And we definitely need two middle linebackers that can both play, especially in our three, four. Um, he should accept that. What do you know? Keenan Allen comes crawling back, just like all my exes. <laughs> Keenan Allen, Jermaine Pratt, an 86 overall and 82 overall. Both, they got a good year or two left, maybe. Keenan Allen's about to, dude. When all the hair goes from your head to your beard, that's how you know you're hitting the 34 plus range. It's just how it be, man. Frankly, that hits some of us at 20, so I'm not gonna even talk shit. I understand. 
It's not fun. All right, here's my draft philosophy going into this draft. Our team is nasty. Players are developing, but I am concerned. Lad McConkie is going to want a big contract. Batalia, who's now an X-Factor, is going to want a mega contract. Rathman is a superstar, so that was an amazing pick. I just noticed that right now. And we're kind of running out of cap space. So long story short, I'm trading my first round pick in this draft, and I want a superstar minimum D-tackle. It is make or break right now for the Los Angeles Chargers. We're, we're going all in to win. Eagles are honestly the perfect team to trade with here because they have two D tackles, Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. I don't think I'll be able to get Jalen Carter for what I'm going for, so I think we go for Jordan Davis here. I'm going to try and keep Porter too, so let's offer him a very mediocre 25-year-old D tackle just to replace Jordan Davis, and let's start with round two this year. This should not be enough. Oh no, they don't have the cap. Okay, I just gotta remove him. Okay, they can do this, technically. They just barely have the cap for this. Oh my god, you're kidding. I can keep my first round pick. I probably could have just thrown in a sixth or seventh, but frankly, I feel like I'm fleecing the shit out of them. This feels fair. Second and third round pick in this year's draft for 83 overall, superstar Jordan Davis. Huge. I'm so excited about this. So the wide receivers now are Ladd McConkie, Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer, Gio Morrison. Quentin Johnson is still here. He's just taking a side line. Batelli is an 86 X factor. And our D-tackle one is now Jordan Davis. D-tackle two, Marcel Porter. This could be a monster season right here. I'm really excited. And frankly, we still have round one pick 14. I could get capital for this if I wanted to, but let's just see what's potential here. Sometimes it's just fun to pick, you know? I don't want to pick up a Herbert replacement. I don't feel like a dick if I do that. This could be our first opportunity to really get an edge. We kind of need to replace Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa is getting old as shit. He's regressing hard right now. How's Kyle Jeffrey out of Penn State? I like Penn State edge rushers. Oh, you're ass. Nobody. Sorry, brother. Oh, uh, you're kind of ass too. I don't like any of these guys. This is the first good prospect. I gotta get somebody to replace Bosa. I should have traded the pick. That's greed right there. I thought he was gonna be there. There's a lot of greats in there and one elite. Raylan Higgins is an 82 speed, 86 excel speed rusher. But he's normal dev. That's really gonna hold him back. All right, we can end this draft. All right, year four, gentlemen. Big push right here. We've got old ass Keenan Allen. We gotta show out for him. Hey, free agent signings though. Jermaine Pratt, Keenan Allen. Jordan Davis now after the trade. I like how this looks. Okay, I mean, midseason's a little better, but dude, I don't know what we're doing wrong. I think we're just getting smacked by the Chiefs every season, and that's making the regular season very difficult. Three and four right now. This is our make or break season. Lost to the Rams with Drake May, lost to Steelers, beat the Panthers, Raiders, lost to the Chiefs, beat the Broncos, lost to the Patriots. Play the Chiefs again on the schedule, play the Raiders again. We gotta close the season out. Come on, boys. I mean, technically, next year will be still really solid. It's not the end of the world if we don't go here, but I am worried about our cap space. We spent a little too much on Jermaine Pratt and Keenan Allen. Oh, thank you. We close out the season hot, 12 and 5. It's maybe one of the first times I've ever seen the Jets in the playoffs. I'm not kidding, in a, in a franchise. I, like, never see them in there. 11 and 6. Damn, good for them. Let's see how the season went. We're sixth in passing yards on 31 and 7. It was an okay season for Herbert. Definitely not his best. Burrow, dude. Dude, Drake Mace is like taking over the league, I guess. Bo Nix. Holy shit. Caleb Williams. Of course, Lance Lehman. Can't forget about Lance Lehman. Looks like the Giants gave up on JJ already. The fuck is JJ McCarthy? JJ McCarthy is a Buccaneer. Josh Jacobs continues to go off. Dobbins, 1,015. Batalia beat McConkie this season and 12 touchdowns. McConkie is such a solid wide receiver, bro. He's putting up 1,010 touchdowns virtually every season. 1,000 plus. Jermaine Pratt stepping into a big role on this defense. That was a big pickup. Henley right behind. Then we got Sean Wilson, Meadows, Bosa. That's just for tackles. As far as sacks are concerned, it's Meadows. Bosa with 19. TFLs too is really good. Um, where's Jordan Davis? Shockingly low numbers for Jordan Davis. 14 TFLs is really nice, but two and a half sacks. I, I don't know if I have his ability set. That's the only thing I think of. Do you have inside stuff? Yeah, he does. He has inside stuff. There's no reason he shouldn't be going crazy. I guess I'll give him defensive rally. Help out Joey Bosa. Maybe a second and third was the right amount for Jordan Davis. All right, boys, we've been to the wild card before. I'm not going to step in on this one. I'm actually just going to hard sim because losing the wild card is not even... No... <laughs> Yo, we beat the Jets by a single point. 25 to 24 against the Jets, but it's these dudes again. Ah, playoff rivals. No, dude. This is like, ah, oh, okay, let's go. I'm stepping in. I'm playing an offensive and a defensive drive. Let's see if we can take on the Chiefs. After that, it's all sim. Come on, boys. The arch nemesis. Let's take them out. I don't know if I can weather another loss to the Chiefs. At least it's raining. Maybe that'll help us. Here we go, boys. Meadows, Davis. Oh, Bosa star? Bosa no X-Factor. I haven't seen that in a long time. That's a dot. 
Oh my god, down to the one. How are we gonna get this stand here, boys? I think we gotta send heat. Cannot let him run up the middle here. I gotta get out Gilman in case he's running this to Pacheco. He's not. Good defense! Asante Samuel, Deion Henley. Big bodies in there. Now they're going goal line, third and goal. Maybe a fullback dive? I gotta get Jermaine Pratt up and ready. Oh, we're there. That is stuffed! Fourth and goal, a goal line stand, maybe. Oh my God, they're going for it. And they're still in a goal line set here. Is this a run? This is huge. Fourth and goal, it's a pass. Oh, I'm sick. That was actually really good defense. That's just a great catch by Rishi Rice. It is 21 to seven. Okay, it's 21. Dude, please don't hang 45 on us again. 21 to 35. Ugh. This is so frustrating. They hung 45 on us two years ago. We then missed the playoffs. We come right back into the playoffs just to get smoked again. Oh, I'm so sick of this team. He's Thanos. He's uh, he got a perfect QBR, 25 for 29, 350 yards, five touchdowns. Piss off. Oh, he's whooping our ass. This is making me mad. Who would have thought that the hardest part of the Chargers rebuild was simply seeing the Chiefs this often? I didn't even have this much trouble when I rebuilt the Broncos. Back up to the draft. You know what's even more frustrating? We keep getting smacked around by the Chiefs, but they're not winning the Super Bowl. Like, okay, so they lost to the Bucks here. They didn't even make it here. Niners lost. The Niners made it here and lost. Wow, Niners just losing in the Super Bowl. What are the odds? They haven't won it. Like, they're not winning. Oh, it's making me mad, bro. How are these other teams beating them? All right, boys. I know I said last season was make or break. This season's make or break. Let's see if we can make a big uh, free agency signing because, oh no, we have no cap space. Nope, we just re-signed everybody. We have no cap space. Fuck, it really is make or break. Okay, so Keenan Allen's out. He retired. But we retain a high majority of our talent. We've got Morrison, McConkie, Palmer. We got Battaglia. We've got one of the best O lines in the league. We've got Dobbins and Herbert. Defensively, we still got Pratt, Bosa, Tua Pelotu, Jordan Davis, Samuel, Wilson, Derwin, Meadows. I, I have no cap space. We got to win it right now. No excuses. We got to win it right now. All right, draft recap. Oh my God. Okay, so I whiffed on Jake Boyd, probably skipped it because it was so uneventful, but oh my God, the CPU, a 78 overall, oh no, 76 overall middle linebacker from Penn State, who's a normal dev. How is that even possible? How are you 76 overall with normal dev? Now, one thing I, I do think EA needs to work on is in the game, they have a desired amount of X-Factor star dev players that they'll allow. So sometimes you draft a monster like this and he's still normal dev because the game's trying to even out dev traits, but there needs to be a better system for that you should not be taking a 76 overall in the third round and not getting hidden depth. that's a crazy good pick regardless paul ferris i like the selection a lot i hate to say it but at 32 years old a nuclear cap hit and no dev trait joey bosa is now a liability i think the final thing we got to do especially if this is a really big se season for us we got to trade joey bosa and we need to get an edge rusher that can actually apply pressure who's interested in joey bosa we gotta start there and we gotta hope they have the cap for this fucking guy we're really just unloading his cap here. Raiders are interested. They need a left outside linebacker. Joey Bosa and Max Crosby would be a pretty gnarly duo. They're both a little older though. Ooh, Tyree Wilson is a superstar. 27 years old. I could definitely move him to outside linebacker. A second round pick in Joey Bosa for Tyree Wilson. Okay, it fully works, but it puts... Wait, it says it puts us over the cap. That's not true. Wait, 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 wait. No, it doesn't. It doesn't put us over the cap. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, gentlemen, we're cooked. We can't even get rid of Bosa if we want to. Oh boy. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough season. Honestly, our best case scenario is not running into the Chiefs. I seriously think that we could have won the Super Bowl last season or this season or the season before. We just keep running into the Chiefs. Stop. Let's do it right here, boys. Mid-season, season five. Believe. I believe. Yes. Yes. This is exactly what you want. Oh, taking on the nine and eight Denver Broncos in the wild card. Okay, so big shocker. I'm sure the Chiefs made it, right? I was just about to say, how awesome would be if they just didn't make it okay let's look at this they're the five seed i'm the two seed shit that sucks because they're gonna beat the ravens and if the jets beat the colts oh wait no that's good if the jets beat the colts i play the jets if the chiefs beat the ravens they'll play the texans the only way i get screwed here is if the colts win i gotta beat the broncos first but i'm not worried about that they're ass okay please beat denver oh my god here we go this is our chance this is our chance 
Shit, though, they did get through. How are they even the five seed? Okay, the five seed Chiefs are taking on the one seed Texans. So if we beat the Jets here, we'll take on the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. We gotta beat the Jets. Yeah, dude. Honestly, I'm not watching this game either because the only thing that matters is if I play the Chiefs. Well, that's not true. I do have to beat the Jets, but we beat them last season. And what I'm worried about... All right, all right, all right, Patty Mafraud. You went 11 and six, buddy. You're washed. I know it. You're washed. Your team's getting worse. You're 90 overall. So are we. Please, I need to beat him so badly, dude. I want this so bad. I want it more than I want to breathe. Okay, Herbert's coming off a 35 and five season. Very solid. Dobbins coming off 1115. McConkie 1218. Most touchdown season for McConkie. Battalion took a little step back. Geo and Palmer still adding, adding good reps. Paul Ferris. Very good season for the rookie. A potential defensive rookie of the year campaign for Paul Ferris. Pratt a good season too. Derwin with five interceptions. Sean Wilson with five interceptions. Paul Met. Sorry, I keep calling Paul Meadows. Patrick Meadows really stepped up this season. His most sacks ever, 14, 11 and a half for Bosa. Jordan Davis, that was not worth it. That Jordan Davis trade was not good because he regressed almost instantly. He has not been a big impact. That was one of the bigger mistakes we made on this rebuild, but honestly, our 2024 draft class is carrying the shit out of us, if I'm being honest. I haven't made the best decisions since then. Let's go! Dude, they have so many 99s on this team. Rice, Pacheco, Mahomes, McDuffie. We got a squad too, though. Meadows, Wilson, Herbert, McConkie. Come on. And for the first time, we have home field advantage. We have a better record than the Chiefs. Maybe that'll turn things around for us. We're in SoFi Stadium, baby. I get the start by making a stop. I get one drive on defense, one drive on offense. Come on, Derwin. Oh, I'm there. I got the knockout. What a play. <laughs> what a play. Huge stop, that's a punt. And now we get a first quarter drive. Hey, I said that we gotta get Herbert some offensive abilities. We got Rathman with Nasty Street Tearproof. We got Joe Alt. We got Chet Battaglia. We got Lad McConkey. Those abilities are whack. We need to mess with those abilities, but we won't worry about that right now. I'm chucking a fucking nuke to Lad McConkey. Come on, baby! Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's not really a deep threat guy. He's more of a sure-handed, you know, hitch route type guy. You get what I'm saying. Here we go, boys. New look Chargers, I see Chet Battaglia. The monster second round pick, Khalil Mack, turned into Sean Wilson and Chet Battaglia, two superstar X-Factors. If that's not the best trade you'll ever see, I don't know what is. We're gonna go play action right here. And I'm looking for Gio Morrison on the boundary. There he is. Gio Morrison dragged down. Also, I just lied, Chet Battaglia was round two pick one. It was actually Gio Morrison, uh, but whatever. It was a great trade, so shut up. It's an excellent trade. Ooh, that's a tight window. Hey, Estrada, the backup rookie tight end. It's gonna come down with that. Staying high tempo. Gonna step up with Herbert here because I don't see a lot, but Herbert, don't forget, man. That's the Sheldon High School fishing class president. Guy's got wheels. Lad McConkey's in. I think I see a seam in the zone coverage. Maybe not. We're gonna take the check down, get rocked as we do it. Second and 10. Ooh, George Karlaftis gets home. Oh, wait, no. It's not Karlaftis. It's uh, somebody Anders. Hey, it's third and 12. This is a really big down here. I cannot let this drive sputter to a halt. We got to trust one of our big boys, Chet Battaglia. Exactly who needs the ball right there. Chet Battaglia, monster. Hey, I can't do anything better to start this team out on the right foot. It's time to let them take over. Here we go, boys. 7077. No, please. Yes, 14 7. You got it. Dude, guys, we got to score every fucking possession because that's what the Chiefs are going to do. 21. That's what we need. 28. 28. 35. 42. Oh, I want to watch, baby. I want to watch, Mahomes. I want to watch as you flounder. Come on, baby. I'm your biggest hater. Third and one, check down. Yeah, that's going to get you 15 points, isn't it? Let's go. First and 10. This is the only team that could score and then get an onside kick too. Inbounds. You got to call a timeout, Andy. Andy goes no huddle. He's saving the timeout for what? For what? Second and two. Rifle. Huh! Sean Wilson. Catch that shit. He had it. Whatever. We're, we're going to win this. We're going to win this, right, guys? Patty Mafraud, enjoy Cancun, bud. I already booked your ticket. I got you on a first class flight straight to Cabo. 42 to 28, we finally broke the curse. And can I just say, Mahomes still played insane. 402 yards, three touchdowns. Herbert, 346 and four. It's honestly a miracle we won this game. Frankly, our X Factor was J.K. Dobbins of all people. 14 for 81, 5.7 and two touchdowns. Uh, Hollywood, 
went off. McConkey. Oh my God. Our X Factor was McConkey. Eight for 152 and three touchdowns. That's ridiculous. Oh my God. We're winning the bowl now. I literally don't care who we're playing in the Super Bowl. That was my Super Bowl. What a weird Super Bowl. I'm taking on the Minnesota, the 10 and 7 Minnesota Vikings. This is a so rare. Madden Sims, you will so rarely see a Chargers Vikings Super Bowl. In fact, I challenge you to go on Madden and try to replicate this. Who'd they be? They beat the Seahawks, then the Rams, and then the Panthers. Whatever, man. Let's ball out, baby. It's our first Super Bowl. We finally made it after five tough years. Let's go for it, y'all. Well, actually, no, let me see, like, who do the Vikings have? Can we take a peek at this Vikings roster real quick? All right, Vikings got Jefferson, Derisaw, Addison, Hawkinson. Who's the quarterback? So it's this dude, Reed Anderson at TCU. So they traded McCarthy and they picked this dude up and he's solid. Reed Anderson. Okay, let's play ball, baby. The Super Bowl, baby. Oh, uh, we waited a long time for this. All of Los Angeles is in Tampa Bay to watch this. Just kidding. The Chargers don't have any fans. Everyone knows that. Third and nine. And I just fucking run commit. And he missed. Reed Anderson. Rest in piss, buddy. Oh, my God. I just ran commit. I did not mean to do that. And they turned the ball over. Oh, my God. You could not ask for a better start to the Super Bowl. What? Battaglia has him. That's not a great ball. Not a great ball. I was just hoping for a little back shoulder beauty to Battaglia, but it uh, did not look like that. Regardless, we're all right. All right, third and 10, third and 10. What we got here? Ooh, are you going to catch that? Quick three and out. I got to let the boys take over. I'm useless. Hey, it was a good, good stop, though. It was a clean wash. Vikings are on the board first in second. Come on, Chargers. Yes, seven for us. We need seven more before they get a touchdown. Please, boys. There's no scoring. Stop after stop after stop. We finally get in the end zone. It is 14 to 14 in the Super Bowl right now. Reed Anderson's got the ball first and 10. Send some heat, gentlemen. Get home. Reed Anderson. Oh, oh, who's got it? Is that Asante or Sean? I don't know. But that's a pick six in the Super Bowl. I think that's Sean Wilson. Oh my God, Reed Anderson is selling this game. It was Asante Samuel. <laughs> oh, what a dog. Asante Samuel with the pick six in the bowl. Let's go, bro. I also played Madden with him. Great dude. And he just clutched up our Chargers Super Bowl too. That's crazy. Yo. Hey, it's not over yet, but wow, we could be in a lot worse spots. Three timeouts left for the Vikings, 45 seconds, and Reed Anderson is absolutely rattled. Ooh, right through the middle, a sack early. They lose 10 yards in a timeout. That's a great way to start that drive. Get home, Bosa. Okay, I still take a lot of bounds. Also, it looks like Bosa got his superstar back. Congratulations, buddy. Last season, Bosa was star, so he must have gone up to superstar for the Super Bowl. Third and 21. Meadows. Meadows. Ooh, what a rocket. Oh, my God. What a rocket. That was so open. Asante Samuel, what are you doing? You just had the pick six, and now you got a blown coverage? Fourth and 21. One more stop. Promised land. Take me home. Take me home. Take me home. Big heave. Okay, that is fine. You got to check down Hail Mary. Well, I guess they did still have a timeout, so they reset the sticks. That was a pretty good play. 17 seconds, one timeout. Please, boys. Please, no. That was actually open. That was there. Ooh, I guess they got Calvin Ridley, too. Oh, this is big. Second and 10. So little clock left. They... Oh! Another one! Peoples! Elijah Peoples! That is not a player we talk about a lot. That is a depth corner. Elijah Peoples in the nickel set just ended the Super Bowl. I think Asante Samuel is going to get Super Bowl MVP, dude. Victory formation in the bowl. Yes. Yes, man. We made it. Let's go! Justin Herbert, Asante Samuel, Joey Bosa, J.K. Dobbins, Lad McConkey are Super Bowl champions. Herbert had an amazing game. He could get Super Bowl MVP too, but dude, I don't know how it's not Asante. But that pick six was so unbelievably clutch. Honestly, it was a very defensive Super Bowl. We've been putting up all these crazy numbers and it's just pretty tame in, in comparison, but an awesome game, an awesome Super Bowl. Finally!
Let's see who Super Bowl MVP. Yep. Yeah, good luck ever replicating this. Try to get Chargers Vikings Super Bowl with Asante Samuel Super Bowl MVP. That's awesome. Paul Ferris, Defensive Rookie of the Year. We've now had two middle linebacker Defensive Rookie of the Years as the Chargers. Ironically, we never got an Offensive Rookie of the Year, an Offensive Player of the Year, or an MVP. And yet we did get a Super Bowl. All right, hey, let's put the team on autopilot for about four years. See what kind of position we put this team in. Like, I have a feeling we did not put this team in a great spot. Not to be cynical, but I'm worried. Let's sim four years in the future, see what's up for the Chargers. All right, four years later, we didn't win any Super Bowls, but dude, look at this. The Baltimore Ravens built an utter dynasty. Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl. We were not getting past them. I think my favorite part of this though, after looking at our team and seeing what's happened, almost everybody's retired. There's not a lot of our original talent left. The Chargers are doing kind of a rebuild here. That much is obvious, but look at Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa absolutely refuses to retire from football. And I love that, man. He's 37 years old. He's washed. He's got bills to pay. All right, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed. This rebuild was awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.